the Oyo State Command of the Nigeria Immigration Service has arrested and repatriated 18 foreigners for allegedly possessing voter cards. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories. At number one, the Oyo State Command of the Nigeria Immigration Service has arrested and repatriated 18 foreigners for allegedly possessing voter cards. The NIS controller in the state, Issa Dan Suleiman, made this known during a sensitization program on the 2023 general elections for stakeholders in Ibadan on Wednesday. The theme of the sensitization program is credible elections in Nigeria, what is expected of migrants before, during and after the election. Mr. Dan Suleiman said no migrants, regardless of their status, should participate in the 2023 general elections, and any migrant caught in possession of a voter's card will face the full wrath of the law. At number two, in a statement by the Police Public Relations Officer of the Federal Headquarters, Muyewa Adejubi, the Inspector General of Police, Usman Al-Kali Baba, has directed the Commissioner of Police, Ocean State, CP Olaleye Faleye, to investigate the alleged assault on woman inspector Olorun Shogo Bamidele by her DCO in Ode Omo, Ocean State. He assured the general public that justice will be done in the case to protect the core values and ethics of the Nigeria police force. At number three, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele, says the E Naira has recorded 700,000 transactions valued at 8 billion Naira since its inauguration on October 25, 2021. Emefiele said this on Wednesday in Abuja at the 28th edition of the Apex Bank's annual in house executive seminar with the theme Digitalization of Money and Monetary Policy in Nigeria. He was represented by the Deputy Governor of Financial System Stability, CBN, Aisha Ahmed. He added that the E-Naira has been attracting accolades across the globe as a monumental success. At number four, the Olu of Wari, His Majesty Ochiame Atuase III, has taxed the government in Nigeria to provide enabling environment for media practitioners in the country. The monarch made the call on Wednesday while hosting executive members of the Delta State Council of the Nigeria Union of Journalists and Press Week Committee who paid him a courtesy visit in his palace to intimate him of the activities lined up to celebrate the 2022 NUJ Delta Press Week. Atuase commended the governor of Delta State, Dr. Ifani Okoa, and the government of the state for deeming it fit to build and donate a press center and a bus to the Nigeria Union of Journalists Delta State Council. The chairman of NUJ Delta State Council, Comrade Michael Ikowu, while addressing the monarch, said there will be a fundraising to establish businesses for the council to enable it to have some level of independence. At number five, the Federal High Court of Nigeria has constituted a special task force of judges to hear and determine all pre-election cases swiftly. According to Ms. Obi Christova, a circular letter issued by Chief Judge John Soho says it became necessary to designate a team of judges following the large volume of pre-election suits that have flooded the court. Mr. Soho stated that members of the tax force will suspend all regular cases in their respective courts due to the urgency of the electoral cases, which are also time-bound. He mentioned that the judges would have four weeks to dispose of the pre-election cases. At number six, the Federal Road Safety Corps says human errors cause 75% of road accidents in the country. Modukwe Ojobenga, FRSC Unit Commander in Okiti Pupa, Ondo State, said this during the inauguration of the public sensitization campaign on Ember Months, held at New Garage. She added that environmental and technical factors also contribute to road traffic accidents in the country. She appealed to motorists and motorcyclists to abide by traffic rules and regulations and to avoid the human factors that may lead to road crashes. At number seven, the Edo State Police Command says officers recovered 10 dead male bodies within a bush path by Ibilio Lampersi Axis along the Lagos Abuja Expressway. This is contained in a statement issued by Chidi Nwabuto, the spokesman of the command in Benin on Wednesday. Mr. Nwabuto said, through credible intelligence, the operatives from Ibilo Divisional Headquarters of the command, in collaboration with the vigilance group and the hunters, discovered the bodies on Tuesday at about 11 o'clock a.m. 
hear that, that the bodies had since been deposited at the Ibilo General Hospital Mortuary for preservation and forensic investigation. At number eight, NDLEA Commander of Kaduna State, Omar Adoro, told journalists on Wednesday in Kaduna that the agency arrested 130 suspects in Kaduna State in October while in possession of illicit drugs weighing over 1,700 kilograms. He said that seven of those arrested are female. Mr. Adoro added that the agency also dismantled 20 notorious drug joints and sealed seven properties linked to drug traffickers. He said the agency also conducted sensitization programs in secondary schools in Kafenchan, Kaduna and Zaria, among other towns and cities. He also advised parents and guardians to always be watchful over their wards and the companies that they keep. At number nine, Russia has ended its suspension of an agreement allowing the export of grain via Ukraine's Black Sea ports, the Defense Ministry in Moscow says. The ministry said that with the help of the Turkish mediation, Ukraine promised not to use the sea corridor for hostilities against Russia. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan says impoverished nations in Africa will be given priority regarding new grain shipments from Ukraine. Finally, at number 10, Elon Musk on Wednesday said that it will be a few more weeks before any banned accounts, such as that of former US President Donald Trump, may be restored on the platform. The potential reinstatement of such accounts banned for violating the site's content moderation rules has been seen as an indicator of where Musk wants to take the site he describes as a global town square. Musk also said he had talked to civil society leaders about how Twitter will continue to combat hate and harassment and enforce its election integrity policies. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.